We're going to carry on now and look at another condition affecting the airway, that of asthma. Now asthma is a fairly common condition in the Western world, but less common in developing countries. But it's useful for everyone to know about it. Because asthma is an acute obstructive airways disease. Acute means recent onset. Obstructive airways means that the airways are obstructed and the individual can't get the air from the outside down into their alveoli. There is obstruction in the airway. And another important thing to remember about asthma is asthma occurs to people who are otherwise healthy. So that someone can have an episode of asthma and then recover completely. And there are varying degrees of asthma as well, from very mild to very severe. And of course, it remains a tragedy uh, in the United Kingdom, for example, that uh, most years in this country, there's almost 2,000 people die of asthma. And we believe that most of these deaths could be prevented with appropriate treatment. So very important for all healthcare professionals to know about the condition of asthma. So let's start a consideration of the subject. And we'll look at the pathophysiology. And as always, I feel this helps us to understand the patient's symptoms and how to treat them. Bronchial asthma is a reversible obstructive airways disease. So in some respects, the features are similar to chronic obstructive airways disease, but they're reversible. The features aren't quite the same, but in, in some respects, they're the same. And the clinical features are produced by three pathophysiological features. So three principal areas of pathophysiology to consider. The first is contraction of the smooth muscle walls of the small bronchi and bronchioles. So if you remember the structure of the uh, respiratory tract that the, uh, the larger bronchioles, the, the larger bronchi, sorry, break down into smaller bronchi, and the whole thing forms like a tree structure. But ultimately, before it goes into the alveoli, there's a terminal bronchiole, the very small airway passages. So this would be the terminal bronchiole before the alveoli. And these have muscular walls, and there is contraction of the muscular walls of the small bronchioles and alveoli. Of course, that reduces the lumen of the bronchioles, therefore it reduces the amount of air that can get in and out of the alveoli. In addition to contraction of the smooth muscles, asthma is an inflammatory condition and there is inflammatory swelling of the surface mucosa. And the swelling contributes to reducing the lumen still further. Inflammatory swelling of the surface mucosa, reducing the lumen still further. Further reducing the amount of air that can get from the large, bronchio, uh, the large bronchi into the alveoli. And the third classical clinical feature is overproduction of uh, viscous, vi viscoid secretions. Viscous secretions. And these secretions again can accumulate in the airway, further narrowing the lumen and obstructing the airflow to the alveoli. So we've got three features all contributing to obstruction of the airway. One, we've got contraction of the smooth muscle, which actually narrows down the lumen. The second one, we've got swelling of the surfaces, so the surfaces inside become swollen, further narrowing the lumen. And the third feature, the production of viscous secretions, which can clog up and further narrow the lumen of the airway. So for three reasons, the significant narrowing of the lumen of the airway. And uh, one point that is worth noting is that while I've said it's true that asthma affects otherwise healthy people, we now know from biopsy studies that chronic asthma 
may lead to irreversible airway limitation. And we'll look at why this occurs later on in the talk. So chronic asthma may lead to chronic obstructive airways disease. It's a possible cause of it. But otherwise, normally when these people are treated, then uh, they recover very well back to full health again. So this diagram illustrates the pathophysiological features. And first of all, we've got the production of the uh, viscous uh, secretions. So a lot of material secreted into the airway passages here. Production of viscous uh, secretions. And in fact, this can become so severe that they actually form mucus plugs in the airway. And sometimes people who've had asthma or uh, during an attack even will cough up plugs of viscous uh, dried up sort of clotted secretions because they may form plugs that block, actually block uh, this airway passage. So production of uh, viscous, viscous secretions. And moving down, as we mentioned, there is actually bronchoconstriction. The muscle walls contract, and instead of being in the normal lumen of the airway, instead of having this distance of lumen, it's reduced and you have a narrowed lumen there. So again, narrowing the passage to allow the air in and out of the alveoli. And the third feature we've mentioned is that there can be swelling of the surface mucosa. Inflammatory swelling, which I've tried to illustrate here. But of course these three features will occur in the same length of the bronchial, uh, same length of the, uh, in the same length of the bronchial. And as a result of these processes, as we've said, there might may be hypertrophy. Actually, uh, in, um, the wall will intrude into the lumen irreversibly uh, if, this pro if this process is repeated, if it becomes chronic. This is because uh, a protein called collagen, in other words, uh, fibrous tissue, can be deposited in the airways, causing uh, permanent fibrosis and narrowing of the lumen. But normally, as we've said, acute attacks of asthma can be treated and the patient will recover fully uh, from, from the condition, or from that attack anyway. Now this is one area where we can apply our knowledge of the nervous system. Remember the nervous system is divided into the voluntary and the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is itself divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Well, when the bronchial tree re receives sympathetic innovation or sympathetic stimulation, the bronchioles will dilate. Because remember, that's the fight or flight response, sympathetic stimulation. You want lots of air in and out of the lungs um, to, to maximize the oxygenation of the blood during a fight or flight situation. And it's the parasympathetic nervous system. When that stimulates the bronchial tree, then that will cause the Bronchos, bronchioles to close down, that will cause bronchoconstriction. And as well as that, it's the parasympathetic nervous system that increases the amount of secretions that, that, that are deposited into the bronchial tree. So this helps us to understand why the features come about. And it's very important if later on we're to understand the treatment, the drug treatment of uh, an asthmatic attack and indeed the prevention of asthmatic attacks. So let's just look at this in a diagrammatic form. So as we've said, the autonomic nervous system is looking after physiological activity not under the control of the will, and it's subdivided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. Now the effect of the sympathetic is to cause bronchodilation, and it causes bronchodilation by causing relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles. 
So the autonomic model